The Pack-A-Mat. Uh, Simka, can I have the Pack-A-Mat? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! Thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. You did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a pac a, a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for Fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As Fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that Fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because Fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was going to be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you gonna ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Uh, I'll never pass it. You will! He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them. All your fingers, you could bruise them. You got it! Thanks a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. <sighs> Krampus, thanks a lot! For what? The secret! What secret? About the pliers! Oh, that! You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember! <sighs> the topic I changed! It's a hammer! You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. To pound in nails, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could bruise it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. Super. I'm sure you're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Krampus, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> A drill is such a great tool indeed. To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could lose it. A drill is such a great tool indeed. And if it's not a drill, right. Hammers, wrenches, drills, screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? 
You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack a mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we Fixies sure know how to keep secrets. The barcode. And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No! Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm, and what's inside this one? Uh, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. <laughs> If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for hmm, a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In the refrigerator! 
Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. The camera. <laughs> Stop right there and let me see how pretty you look today. Well, just don't tell that to the elevator. Bye-bye. Check it out, Nolik. Class, huh? You're not gonna get in trouble for doing that? Uh, no. My dad gave me permission to take a few pictures with this camera. No, I mean the picture. You're sure that your mom and dad will like that you took it without asking for permission? But look, what a good picture. You know what, Tom Thomas? You're like a regular paparazzi or something. Paparazzi? They're the ones that take one photo and get millions, aren't they? You're right. And don't care about anyone except their photo paparazzis. <sighs> Did you ever wonder how a photo camera works? Let's say you want to take a picture of nature. The light that's outside goes into the camera's lens. That's the glass eye on the front of the camera. The lens takes the light from the scene outside the camera and turns it into a tiny picture that's inside the camera. Then the picture is recorded onto a special electronic sensor called a matrix that's sensitive to light. Click, and there's your photo. What a great idea! Now I know! I'm going to be a paparazzi. Hey, what about your promise? What promise? To never take a picture of us. We're a secret. Stop. Hey, relax. I'll delete them all later. Tom Thomas, stop this right now. I won't until I get a photo of you. No, look, let's run. You can't run from me. The story of the century, the monster and its prey. Tom Thomas! Help! No, he won't help, because he's a paparazzi. Yes, I got it. That's my best photo yet. <gasps> What's all this noise about? Awesome shot. The first cameras were invented almost 200 years ago. But they worked very slowly. If you wanted to have your portrait taken, you'd have to sit still for a whole hour. After film was invented, cameras got much faster, and it became possible to take about 10 pictures a minute. On a piece of film, everything appears to be backwards. Black parts of the picture are white, and the white is black. It doesn't look normal until the picture is transferred from the film to a piece of photographic paper. Now people shoot pictures with digital cameras that work without any film at all. You can look at what you shot instantly on a screen to see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can try shooting another one. And today, you don't even need a separate camera to take pictures. Almost every mobile phone has one. Simka Nolik, are you in there? Hey, come out. I'll stop shooting photos of you. Aren't we friends? I'm sorry, guys. Well, your friends were almost eaten alive by a dog. Please forgive me. Want to look at the photos I took? <laughs> sure, go on, show us what you got. We're not in that shot. We're not there either. Huh. Well done there, paparazzi. Hang on a sec. I still got another one and you're in it. I know for sure. Look. I'm zooming in. 
It's impossible. I don't believe it. It's possible. But when did you have time to turn into screws? The same time you were pushing the button. When we're scared, we can change faster than the blink of an eye. You lost. <laughs> Paparazzi. And what are you going to do with your millions, Mr. Paparazzi? Uh, would you please stop calling me that? You got it. After every one of those photos is thrown away. All right, I'll delete them. And do I have to delete this one, too? No, keep it. It's a great shot. <gasps> I never even saw you take it. The level. Tom Thomas, I'm really sorry. The movie this weekend, I have to cancel. You do? I need to go to Africa for work. I leave tomorrow. Oh, cool. You think I could go with you? To Africa? Can you even find it on the map? Africa. Here we go. Mm-hmm. No, you're still too little. When you grow as tall as the top of Africa, then I'll take you with me. Here, there, ugh. Uh, uh. Tom Thomas, what you doing down there? I want to know if I'm as tall as the top of Africa or not. Well, do you know your height? Uh-uh. Okay, then let's measure you and mark how tall you are. You just need to hold the book, all right? <sighs> Simka, uh, how do we measure what's higher? The top of Africa or this line over here? Hmm. Hmm. It's a tough one. We need a piece of flexible, clear tubing. Oh, I can get it for you. I know where it is. And we'll build a simple tool to find out the answer. It's called a water level. Let's do an experiment. First, we'll pour water into two bottles, a little bit more into one, and a little less into the other. Now we'll connect them with a tube so that the water can flow between them. You see? The water flows and flows, and then it stops. It stops when there's the same amount of water inside of both bottles. And if we do this with a simple tube, it becomes a useful tool called a water level, in which the water on both sides is always the same height. on this end, all right? Be careful how you lift it or the water can get out. No, like, what's going on? The water inside the tube is even with the line. There you go, Tom Thomas. Where the water is right now is how tall you are. And? Well, it looks like Tom Thomas isn't quite tall enough for Africa. What if we hold the tube a little higher? You can try if you want, but the water's gonna stay where it is. See? The water level on your side always stays the same as on the other side. Uh, I'm not getting that tall for a while yet. And what if we just lower the map a little? That wouldn't be honest. But it would be clever. There are a lot of great proverbs. But my favorite one is, measure twice, cut once. And to measure things right, you need measuring tools. The simplest one is a ruler. With its help, we can find out the length of an object. A watch can tell us how much time has passed. A speedometer shows us how fast we are moving, like in a car or on a bike. An electric meter keeps track of how much electricity we are using. A decibel meter can tell us who is screaming or stomping louder and a beam compass is used to accurately measure the size of a coin or a hole. We couldn't get by without wonderful tools like these. If we didn't measure the things we are building carefully, everything around us would just come loose and fall apart. Uh-oh. Dad. Dad. Look, Dad. Hmm. That's strange. Looks like you are a little taller. Does that mean you'll take me with you? Yeah. 
Are you ready? Yay! Ugh. But everyone who goes to Africa has to get vaccinated. You're okay with that, aren't you? I need vaccinations to go. Are you sure? Yeah, there's one against malaria, tsetse fly, crocodile bites. Altogether, there are ten shots. Ten shots? Yeah, ten. Oh. Dad, you know, I was joking. After you left the room, I moved the map down. Okay, I see. And I was joking about all those shots you need. What? You mean you don't need to get shots? You gotta. Just not ten. So how many? Nine of them. There's no vaccination anywhere to stop a crocodile from biting you. <laughs> the drum. Now, let's turn it on. It's buzzing. You hear it? I would love to. But the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging. Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. Nolik, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius, will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sound. You are? I think it's a ghost. Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm, so it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry, it's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do. I can do that, and better than you can, too. And what if I play like this, huh? Then I'll go like that, or like that. Keep going, Nolik. This is fun. Maybe it's fun for you. 
Let's turn it off. Can you hear that? It stopped buzzing. It did. Hey, everybody, it's Nolik. Yo, what's up? So, our noisy ghost is back. I thought you were practicing at home now. Tom Thomas is drumming there. I had to run away. Well, our excursion is over. And now I would just be so happy to listen to your rock group. The disguise. Ugh, good. Tom Thomas, <laughs> why do you need a second aquarium? <laughs> Especially without any fish. First of all, it's a terrarium. And it's not for fish, it's for lizards and snakes. Ooh. My friend Katya asked me to take care of him while she's away. That's why I brought him here. Take care of who? There's no one in there. Ah! <laughs> What is that? <laughs> it's a chameleon, Nolik. I think he's awesome. It's a bad idea to take him out. He might run away. Don't you worry. I got him. What a monster. But how come I couldn't see him before? It's because a chameleon knows how to disguise himself by changing the color of his whole body. <laughs> Have you ever seen a military uniform? They have special patterns and colors that help soldiers hide. That's called camouflage, and people learned it from animals. For instance, a caterpillar can look like a twig, and a seahorse can look like a piece of coral. An ordinary gray rabbit becomes white in the winter, so a wolf will have trouble finding it in the snow. But the champion of camouflage is the chameleon. This master of disguise can change its color in just a matter of seconds. Hey, Tom Thomas, where'd your chameleon go? Oh, it disappeared. It didn't disappear, it camouflaged. He won't hide for long. Let's find him. <laughs> Chusaka, have you seen the chameleon? Where is he? See him? No, he's not gonna let us catch him. We're gonna have to, to trick him into coming to us. Uh-huh. We can set a trap with something that he likes. What do they like, I wonder? What else? Their food. And what do chameleons eat? Well, like flies or caterpillars, roaches. Where's the fly gonna come from? Well, what if... What? Oh, Simka, just you wait. I'm gonna get you. Hey, we gotta help Katya. You don't see the caterpillar complaining. <laughs> Quiet. Nolik, you start buzzing. Buzzing? Yeah, like a fly. Yeah, and flap your wings, too. Simka, how long do I got to keep doing this? Until the chameleon shows himself. Just keep buzzing. Tom Thomas, there he is. Grab him. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> all the time. They use nets that look like bushes, paint their tanks in colors that make them blend into their surroundings, and even fly in special planes that can't be seen by radar. They do everything they can to disguise their location. 
But it's not just the army that uses disguises. Photographers camouflage themselves to take pictures of wild animals. People use makeup to camouflage their blemishes. And artists, they disguise old walls with bright, happy pictures. And people just love to put on masquerade parties where they disguise themselves in costumes and masks. And of course, fixies have their own great disguise. Remember? Well, what is it? Now he won't run away. So, Mr. Master of Disguise, what are you gonna say now? If only I could disguise myself that well. Nolan, what are you talking about? You know how to disguise yourself a hundred times better than him. Ah, oh, you're right. Hey, chameleon, look and learn. Here's a real disguise. Modeling clay. All done. Simka, take a look. I've got my own mm, pack mat Now look at that, a pack mat made out of modeling clay. But this one's my own, and it looks just like a real one. Okay, you're right, it really does, Nolik. Simka, Nolik, what's up? Hi there, Fire. Wanna play some tag with me? I really wish I could play tag, but unlike you, I've got tons of work. Yeah, like what? Well, a bathroom hook fell down. Tom Thomas broke the lamp on his desk. The aquarium has a tube that's leaking. So go and play. I have to get a pack of mat. Oh, oh, oh. I wish you could play Ted. Hold on. Nolik, you've got a pack of mat. Uh-huh. Although I gotta say, it looks a little strange. That's because it's... Let's fix everything before Simka with your pack of mat and my fixie board. This'll be great. <laughs> So where is that hook that fell down? All right. Nolik, get out some sticky stuff. From where? Obviously, from out of your pack of mat mm, But it isn't real. I made it out of modeling clay today. Out of clay? Well, it totally looks real. Long ago, back in the Stone Age, people learned how to use clay to make their dishes and sculptures. But the modeling clay that we use nowadays was only invented about a hundred years ago. Actually, modeling clay is just plain old clay with some ingredients added so it won't dry out. And dyes are mixed in to make all the different colors. There is just no end to all of the fun things you can make out of modeling clay. I got an idea. Go on, turn around. What are you doing? Grabbing glue out of your pack of mat All right, get up here. Will it stick? Yeah, of course it will. Let's go and fix the lamp. We can't fix this without a real pack of mat. Yours will work just fine. So, what else did Simka have to fix? The aquarium! Hop on! <laughs> well, where's that leaky tube? Here! It's leaking at the joint! Yeah, this tube is gonna need a lot of modeling clay. Give me the rest of your pack of mat Sure! And here's a souvenir. <sighs> They're all done. What's all done? <laughs> we already fixed everything. And what did you fix it with? Modeling clay. <laughs> Modeling clay isn't gonna hold anything. Well, I say it will. Wanna bet? All right. <laughs> ah, it's exploding! <laughs> what in the world is happening here? Flooding water. You just do as I tell you without panicking. Did you know it's possible to make modeling clay in your own home? Just write down this recipe. You'll need a cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a half a cup of water. 
Now, mix the salt with the flour and add the water little by little. Mix it together really well. What are you saying? That it looks just like dough? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's just not for eating. It's way too salty. But you certainly can sculpt things out of it. If you want your modeling clay to be colorful, you can add food coloring or watercolors to it. That's it. Your modeling clay is ready to be sculpted. When you're finished, don't forget to let your figures dry in the sun. That way they'll get nice and hard and last you a very long time. <sighs> we almost didn't make it. And did you fix the lamp with that modeling clay? Uh-huh. And the hook, too. That was not a good idea. But it was really quick. Hey, that's true. That's why I want to give a medal to you. You're heroes. For real? Of course you are. And here it is, your medal. But it's made out of modeling clay. Your reward fits your heroic deed. The globe. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Again, I couldn't do it. I told you, there's just no way to hold on when the globe is turning that fast. But I know I can do it. Hmm. Give me that piece of rope there, would you? <gasps> now you can't throw me off. Spin it. Go on. Whoa! What you doing? Trying to learn a bit about the Earth's gravity? That's a globe, not the Earth. Well, a globe's a model of the Earth, isn't it? Hey, come on, Simka. The globe looks like a ball, but the Earth is flat. We walk on it. The Earth also looks like a ball. It's just a very, very big one. It's not true. If the Earth is really round like you say, then it would throw people right off of it, like the globe does to me. No, it's just that the Earth pulls everyone towards it. Are you sure? The planet that we live on, the Earth, is a huge sphere. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the Moon revolves around the Earth. Do you know why they don't fly away from each other? It's because of a force called gravity that pulls all objects towards each other. The heavier the object, the stronger its pull. That's why people, rocks, air, and water get pulled towards the Earth instead of floating up into space. Thanks to gravity, we are able to walk on the Earth. Why doesn't the globe pull on me like the Earth does? Because this globe is very light. Compared to the Earth, this globe is like millions of billions of times lighter. Compared to the Earth, we're specks of dust. He's right. Look, a speck of dust. It sticks to the globe like we stick to the Earth. Oh, come on. It's just because no one's turning it. But the Earth's spinning and we stick to it. What? I just don't believe you. There's just no way the Earth is spinning. You've really got no idea how the days all turn into the nights, do you? Do too. It's because the sun goes up and then sets. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Our sun's here and you're over there. On Earth. Is it dark, Nolik? It's dark. Then it's nighttime on your side. And here, it's day. All right. Now we'll turn the Earth. Hooray! Now it's daytime for me, and night for me over here. Ah, oh, my side got dark again. And for me, it's a new day. All right, fine. You guys were right. I believe you. The Earth is spinning. <laughs> the Earth goes round and round like a tilted spinning top. And as it spins, the sun shines its light on whichever half of the Earth is facing it. And as the Earth makes one full turn, we watch how the night becomes day and the day becomes night again. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one full turn. But that's not all. The Earth is also traveling in space around the sun. It takes the Earth one year to make a full circle. As it goes along its way, the 
top and bottom of the Earth take turns being closer to the sun. That's because the Earth is tilted. When the top half is closer to the sun, it's summer there. While at the very same time on the bottom half, it is winter. And when it is winter on the top half, it is summer on the bottom. Nolik. Nolik, where are you? I'm not sure. Somewhere in Kazakhstan. The force of gravity is super strong around here. So go on, spin it. You're gonna fall off, Nolik. Don't worry, just do it. Go ahead and tilt it if you feel like it. Told ya! Ha! And you were sure I was gonna fall off this globe. That's strange. Nolik, come on over here. What for? You'll see in a second. I don't want to. You really don't want or you can't. Tom Thomas, take a look. <laughs> I get it. He stuck himself to the globe, didn't he? Yeah, with the chewing gum. Isn't it time to go? Uh-huh. And me! Well, what about me? Hey! Ah! Uh, you gotta help me! Don't leave me! Should we help him? It, but the pull of chewing gum is even stronger than the Earth's gravity. The talking doll. Mama. Well then, now you know what you need to do to fix it. <laughs> Professor. Professor. Our lesson is over. <sighs> I'm sorry to be a bother. No problem, Professor Eugenius. Our lesson's over. I've got an urgent matter. You see? Mama. You've got yourself a talking doll! Yes, only she speaks Japanese. The problem is I've been asked to get her to talk in English. We can teach her! It's a new technology. I'm puzzled. Don't you worry. We'll figure it out, Professor. Thank you, my colleague. You're always there when I need it. What would I do without you? Professor! Can you tell us how toys talk? Not now, children. We'll learn about the doll tomorrow. Now it's time to go home. I already know everything about that doll. You do? Changing her voice is so easy that anyone can do it. How? Here, come, I'll show you. talking dolls used to work with a noisemaker inside. When the doll was turned over, air inside the noisemaker got pushed through a squeaker at the end of it, making a noise that sounded like the word mama. Mama. <laughs> Funny. Today, the noises are recorded onto an electronic chip that's part of a little player inside of the doll. Just press a button and the sounds start playing. So now dolls can say much more than just mommy or daddy. They can say anything at all. Well, here's the chip. This is where the recording of the doll's voice is. That's awesome. Can you re-record the voice on there? Well, yeah. Okay, I gotta go. Uh, uh. See ya. Wait, Nolik, I thought of a really funny joke to pull. What if we slept him and then we thought and do something? Uh-huh. Well, now, as I promised yesterday, I'm going to tell you all about talking dolls. Some start talking when you rock them, while others react to noise. And for this little lady, you need to press a button to get her to talk. Who wants to? Tula. Me? Well, okay. I can do it. Go ahead. And you'll hear her say, hi there, mama. <laughs> but in Japanese for now. Tula! <laughs> Is that Japanese for hi there? Tula! Why are you hiding a picture of Digit in the Alpaca Man? <laughs> How could she ever know that? Maybe you're in love? That doll is alive! They call that joking. I just thought of a better joke that we can play. Yeah. What? Tula, don't cry. She's not alive. 
She is alive. I'll tell you who did this horrible thing. It was Fire and Nolan. Huh? It's true, but now the joke will be on them. How? The smartest Fixie in our class is Digit. Sometimes I think that he knows everything about everything. Professor Grandpus has a lot of respect for him. Digit's always in thought whenever you see him, and he doesn't like when anyone distracts him. He just has no time for fooling around with the other boys. Digit prefers to solve problems using his brains and not his muscles. That's why he can have a tough time in gym class. But he's so sweet that it makes you want to help him. To tell you the truth, Digit isn't always great fixing things with his own hands. But no one understands technology better than he does. If something breaks, Digit can always figure out exactly what's wrong with it and the very best way to fix it. We're going to make it even funnier this time. Uh-huh. You came back? What? You Must troublemakers. Now I'll show you what happens to bad boys who hurt girls' feelings. Oh, you got scared. <laughs> Who's crying now, huh? They probably thought that the doll came to life. You know what, Digit? I just started thinking that it, it might be better if she were alive. You know, Tula, you sure are hard to please. <laughs> <laughs> the chain reaction. Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah. 
We could work together and fix Tom Thomas's mood. And I know how. Come help me pick up this domino, will you? Everything in the whole universe is made up of atoms. Particles so extremely small that you can't even see them through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity and hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. There, all done. Nolik, bring him in. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this. I can't believe what I saw. How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction. What? A chain reaction. The crowbar. Everything's fine here, too. I wish something would break for a change. It's already been a week and nothing's broken in here. Stop worrying. Everything breaks at some point. Well, nothing seems to ever break inside of this house. That's because we take such good care of it. No, Masya, it's boring with no real work to do. We should move somewhere else. When Fixies graduate from school, they must choose the place where they want to work. Some will work at factories, and some on ships, and some in theaters, and some in hospitals, too. Fixies are needed everywhere. Now, fixie families with children like to choose places that are a bit quieter. Usually, they'll settle inside of people's houses. It's not too noisy there, like in a factory, but there's still plenty of work to do. They need to check on appliances like computers, vacuum cleaners, telephones, irons, and washing machines. And fixies always try their best. They just love being busy with work. And so, if there's nothing broken in the house, Fixie families will move to a new place where there's much more work to be done. Nolik, did you hear that? Uh, I don't want to move anywhere. But think about the kids, dear. They've got their school and friends here. Do you like this friend of theirs? A human kid playing with Fixie kids. You know as well as I that it's just not right. <sighs> All right, then. If nothing's broken down before the end of the day, that's all. We gotta move. Oh, no, I can't. Tom Thomas comes home the day after tomorrow, and we'd be gone by then. Pull yourself together. And I won't see him anymore at all? No, like, I have an idea. What, what idea? If something happens to break down before the end of the day, then we're not moving. But what if nothing breaks? Calm down. We're gonna make sure of it. Suka, you're a genius. But how can we make sure of it? We're going to use a crowbar. A crowbar is powerful and simple. It's nothing more than a heavy metal bar with either sharp or flat ends. It can be very helpful for breaking through concrete or ice. It can also be used as a lever to root out a tree stump or move a boulder. If one end of the bar has a claw cut into it, then it's good for pulling out nails. Yes, sometimes the simplest tools are the most powerful ones. Do we have that tool? We've got our pack -a mat And it's got everything. Kill it. 
off. Whatever you break's gotta look like it broke all by itself. Oh, I gotcha. And second, you gotta break it in some way that can be fixed later. Did someone say something needs fixing? <clears throat> or am I hearing things? Papas, we just found out that the, uh, television's broken down. Are you sure? Yeah. And one of the keys on the keyboard is stuck. For real? For real. And the clock's not running either. Oh, ho! Masya, our life is getting back on the right track. Should we fix them? Yeah, what else? We are the Fixies. We live to keep on working, and work for us is fun. So we'll just keep on working, cause our work's never done. And deep inside of gadgets, if you look when it's dark, you might just see us face around like multicolored sparks. One, two, three. Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! To fix what's wrong. Tanish! To live from strong. One, two, three. Tanish! Inside will be Tadish! All day and night Tadish! We fix things right Tadish! Oh, that was a lot to do You'd almost think that somebody broke it on purpose Well, we didn't do it It broke by itself Yeah, this apartment still needs a lot of work We shouldn't move anywhere I like it here So do I It's the best See, we don't need to go anywhere the prosthesis. Simka, over here. Take a look at what I found. <clears throat> it's a bear. Ooh. What bear did you find, Nolik? You know, it's the one Tom Thomas told us about. He was his best friend in the whole wide world. Until he became friends with you and me. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Let's try to wind him up. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Now look, Teddy. Go on, Teddy. Yeah. <gasps> oh. Oh, no. Poor little teddy bear. They ripped his leg and didn't care. We didn't rip his leg. It was already broken. It's all clear. A compound fracture. Then why don't we fix him? Tom Thomas will be so happy. Wait. It's not going to be that easy to repair it. We'll need a prosthesis. The human body is built around a frame of bones and joints. And if you break one of the bones, it'll usually heal by itself. The broken bone will grow back together, and you'll be back to normal. But sometimes bones or joints can break so badly that it's impossible for them to heal. When this happens, they have to be replaced with an artificial part called a prosthesis. A prosthesis can replace more than a bone or a joint. It can be made to replace a whole arm or a leg. And where are we going to get a prosthesis? I'm positive we can get it from Professor Eugenius. You're right. Help is on the way. Hello, Professor Eugenius. Ah, I'm pleased to see you, dear children. How do you do? Hi there. Professor Eugenius, can you make a prosthesis? What, have you broken something? Uh, no, not us. It was the bear. He broke his leg. What bear? The teddy bear that used to be Tom Thomas's friend. Ah, now I see. Today, with the help of modern prosthetics, more is being replaced than just arms and legs. For example, if you lose a tooth, it can be replaced with an artificial one. That's also a prosthesis. And there are times when a person starts losing their vision because the lens in their eye gets foggy and can't focus. For this, there's another kind of prosthesis, a new clear artificial lens. A prosthesis can also be used to help people with poor hearing. A tiny device can be put inside of somebody's ear so they can hear what's going on. And that's not all. People have also learned how to treat a sick heart by replacing its worn-out parts with prostheses. What fantastic inventions these prostheses are. It's amazing what they can do. They help people live a full life. Professor, is it working out? We'll know soon enough. Done. 
Here you go. Thanks so much for your help, Professor Eugenius. Not at all. Take care, kids. In gadgets and devices, our work will never end. Appliances are fickle. They need a loyal friend. At morning, noon, and midnight of every single day, when there is an emergency, you know we're on our way. One, two, three. Tish. Inside will be Tish. all day. Things right. Well, now this old friend of Tom Thomas's will be just like new, Nolik. Simka, if Tom Thomas makes friends with the bear, then what? Will he stop being friends with us? Hi, everybody. Hi there. Oh, my teddy bear. You found him for me. And you fixed him. Ah, oh, thanks a lot. It's just like Grandpa said. A friend that's old is better than two that are new. Who's new and who's old? Well, the bear is old. And we're new. No, look, it's not true. You're the Fixies, guys. You're my very, very best friends in the whole wide world. 